we're doing our table and manipulating the data, we'll plot the graph using our distance and average, or t, and that will give us, hopefully, a curved line, but we want to make it a linear graph, so we do an inverse. We need to calculate the uncertainty, so the d uncertainty, d uncertainty, so d, and then the delta symbol is always going to be 0 0.1 if you're doing it on a ruler. It's 0 0.1, it's a, it's a centimetre. That's the error of your centimetres when you divide 0 0.1. So now we're done with d, we can move on to t. To find your range for t, you just take the highest value minus the lowest value. So for the 1 metre, 3.42. And the lowest is 3.38 equals 0 0.04. Then we divide that by 2. So we divide that by 5. Because there were 5 swings we were counting on the pendulum. Or however many times you swung. If you swing a pendulum and you're counting 5 swings, that's the amount you divide by. Now that's uh, uncertainty. So you go through and you do that for all of them. Now you need to find the percentage of that. And to do that, you take your uncertainty, your t uncertainty, and divide that by t, then times that by 100, and that'll give you the percentage. So let's do that in two steps. We've got 0 0.003 divided by 3.40. That equals 8.82352941. We'll then times that by 100, which gives us a percentage of 0 0.0882. We usually go to three significant figures. So basically you're just taking your uncertainty divided by the average times 100, that's it. So now we have all of our percentage uncertainties. They should all be something like 0 point yada yada yada. Always put a percent on the end of there. Since it's an inverse equation, we need to inverse the data. <laughs> So that just means 1 over d. So that means 1 divided by distance. So 1 over d is 1 divided by distance. And distance is basically just your variables at the start that you measured from. So say the ruler experiment, we went from 1 meter. So that's 1 divided by 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. <laughs>
five for my manipulated data. That should have been like a three. Not exactly sure why I got that, but that's that's not important. For achieved, which is this video is aimed for, it doesn't have to be well calculated error bars. So we can literally just draw them on. That's an error bar. This is the area of error we can have within our data. But then to do your shallowest and steepest gradient, or let's do the steepest first actually. So we take the bottom error bar on the first point and the top error bar on the last point. So then we line that up, a nice blue line for the steepest gradient. That's the steepest gradient there. Now we're going to do the shallowest gradient possible, which takes the top point of the first error bar and the bottom error bar of the last point. We draw a line. This will be our shallowest. Now we calculate. Let's calculate the gradient of the steepest graph first. Ooh, that's kind of small. So now to do that, we take two points on the y-axis, the steepest, which is blue. So we take one point on the y-axis. So it's... Uh, <laughs> And then we find another point, it can be any point, so it's take 7 here, which is right here, 7. So it's 3 minus 7, so we find the difference between the two, which is 4, and it's 4. And then we take the difference on the x-axis, so let's go uh, 1, how about we go 1 and 3. So 3 intercepts there, and 1 intercepts down here, so the difference between 1 and 3 is 2. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2 equals 2 so that's our gradient for the steepest which is 2 and then for the shallowest we do the exact same thing we take a point on the y-axis so let's say for steepest let's go it starts at 4 so let's go 4 and then let's find another point let's go say 9 4 minus 9 that's 5 this is big brain time and then we do the same thing on the x-axis, so we can go, um, let's go 2 this time, 2, 3, it's the only other point we can take, 3. So the difference between 2 and 3 is 1. This is, 5 is the gradient of the shallowest, and 2 is the gradient. So now we have the gradient for the steepest, which is 2, and now we have the gradient for the shallowest, which is 5. That's good. Now, the equation we chuck that into to find the best fit um, line to put through the graph is um, basically looks like this. So uncertainty m, uncertainty m equals m steep minus m shallow. And if that sounds complicated, it's not um, really complicated. It's just the steepest gradient minus the shallowest. This really feels wrong, though. So it's just a zero point two. This is all the correct process, but you should get a different number to 0 0.2 with your results. So that's 0 0.2, that's the best fit gradient to go through there. And then that's the graph, so you're done with the graph now, you can leave it. And then we move on to the equation. So we have a side pad here, I don't like these very well, they're not the best teaching tool. Because, I don't know, 